Hello everybody, how's it going? Um, so today's video is going to be a little bit of a rundown of my five favourite um, Patrick Charlton episodes. Um, I did this for Hartnell, yes, and uh, now it's time for Mr Charlton. Um, I actually forgot to do one of these and I'm currently um, just kind of about to finish season nine. So I'm kind of well on my way um, with these episodes. I'm kind of getting closer to my rewatches now. Um, so it's actually gone by incredibly quickly. Um, I'm actually surprised at myself that I've got this far uh, this quickly. Um, but I mean, to be fair, when I have days off, I absolutely batter these um, in terms of watching them because I love watching them so much. So literally people will say to me, should we do this? And I'm like, no. I'm going to go watch the croissants or something like that. So, um, yeah, I've really enjoyed this. So I thought I'd do a top five favourite episodes for the Patrick Troughton, yes. Now, this one was really difficult for me, really difficult. When I did the Hartnell Years video, I found it a lot easier to pick a top five than I did for this because there's been some stories in these three seasons that have been amazing to me and I've absolutely loved them. Um, it was one point this was like a top eight favourite but I had to narrow it down a little bit um, just so that I wasn't rambling on for about an hour about why I loved all of these so much. Um, so I'll kind of just get started um and i'll kick off with number five so my fifth favorite um was the underwater menace now i absolutely adore anything that has jules verne vibes um i'm a massive fan of jules verne so for me this was the best i remember watching um journey to the center of the earth with pat boone when i was incredibly young with my nan um and i remember gertrude the duck and it was one of my favorite films ever um and this kind of gave me these vibes um it kind of went a step further with obviously people being turned into fish <laughs> and like polly nearly getting turned into like a fish person um which was basically just like a mighty boosh makeover. But I I loved the concept of this. Um, the crazy scientist guy who was obviously saying he was going to raise Atlantis, but he was literally just basically trying to blow everything up because he was mental, um, worked brilliantly for this story. It worked really, really well. It's a shame some of it was um, not intact, um, because it would have been a brilliant to see this in its entirety but I loved it I loved it a lot I'm weird as a person um, I so it's kind of nice to be able to watch things that's just so crazy like that was um, yeah I absolutely adored this story which is why it made it onto my list now my fourth favorite um, there are actually two Cybermen stories on this list, but my fourth favourite was the Moonbase. Now, the Moonbase, for me, I loved that story. Um, my favourite character was Benoit. Um, I also loved Ralph. The, the characterizations in that were just fantastic, I thought. I loved the concept of the Cyberman being hidden for so long. Um, Jamie dreaming about um, the Piper was just fantastic as well. Um, but obviously the Piper was just Cyberman. It was a really good little story. Now a lot of um, what happened, it was given away for me quite quickly that it was the Cybermen that were doing what they were doing mainly just because I think I mentioned it at the time when I was watching it it was the veins in the gentleman's neck and as soon as I kind of noticed that I thought oh bloody hell this happened with Sarah um when Sarah was with Harry and Four on the space station and I thought oh my god that happened with her 
and I thought this must be Cybermen it can't not be Cybermen um, I would have been very surprised if it was somebody different so yeah that kind of gave it away for me a little bit but it did not detract from the story at all I loved that story I thought it was a fabulous little um, Cyberman story to kind of have at that point in the season um, especially because it hadn't been that long since we, we had Troughton come in so um, it was quite a nice little thing to be able to watch which is why it made it onto this list really um, I think I actually surprised myself with how much I enjoyed it it was just one of those stories which was a joy to watch really um, and it kind of went from one story to the next for me in terms of goodness so we went from underwater menace into the moon base which I just thought was fantastic to be able to kind of go back to back with two stories that I enjoyed so much um, which is why it, it made it onto this list. Um, my third favourite was the tomb of the Cybermen. Once again I loved seeing the Cyberman um, or the Cybermen in a natural habitat um, of the, the, the tombs. Um, the ice effect of them coming in and out of the tombs I thought was fantastic as well. And overall the story was a, it was, it was a meaty story. Um, it really kept my interest for a really long time. Um, I enjoyed it a lot. I really did. The characterizations, the cast was great as well. They 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 cast that story really really well for me. Um, it was nice to see um, Torberman at the end with the doors. Um, that was like a nice little kind of redemption for him, I guess, because um, he did become obviously an arse due to the Cyberman's influence during that. Um, and the lady, I can't, I can't remember her name, unfortunately, but the, the, the lady that was in it um, played a really good part as well. And it really kept me on tenterhooks. The fact that we were just in this one location, this tomb for the entire story, and we kind of went outside a little bit at the beginning and a little bit toward the end, we were back out of the tomb. Um, but to have a story just kind of in one location, but to still keep somebody's interest, I thought was fantastic. Um... And I, I really enjoyed it. And the use of the cyber mats to kind of do their little work and them being electrocuted. And it, it just really kept me entertained, that story. So um, I think that was the one story as well where I think, I, again, I think I mentioned it at the time, where I saw a lot of Matt Smith's characterization of his doctor in Tomb of the Cybermen. Um, the part where put your hands up um, and he put his hands straight up. Um, it was very reminiscent to me of things and body movements and you can see where Matt Smith got some influences from I think one of you guys had said he'd actually used that as a point of reference when he was researching the role um, and previous incarnations previous actors and I just I just thought it was quite nice to actually see because I'd never seen that before so um, it was a nice little link to kind of what I have seen um, pretty like recently so I enjoyed that quite a lot as well. Now my second favourite story um, is another mad one and it is the mind robber. Now the mind robber for me was was one of the, the best things I'd seen for, in Doctor Who for a long time, a long time. Um, just the, the thought processes of writing that I just found amazing that so much content from all of these different fictional worlds, these fictional creations that, you know, we all kind of grew up with. Like, I grew up with Gulliver's Travels and and I just thought including those characters and seeing all of the sets, and I just absolutely adored that story so, so much. Like, if I could live in any kind of world, it would be in a world of fiction like that. Um... I'm obsessed with books, I'm obsessed with reading, I could, I could read all day every day, you know, if I could and I had the capability to and I didn't have to go to work, I would literally just sit and read all the time, it's one of my favourite things to do, so for me this story was just, it was escapism within escapism, which I thought was absolutely, I remember watching um, 
The Wizard of Oz when I was little for the very first time. And I always remember the moment when she went out of the front door in black and white and she opened the door and there was just this wonderful colour in front of her. Um, and obviously at the time when that film was made, there was a, you know, society wasn't the best. People, there was depression. There was people went, you know, prospering. And to see, to go to the cinema and, and to see something like that where there's this, you can open the door and there's this world of wonder and magic and dream and escapism was just amazing. And for me, this was the mind robber. Um, I loved it so, so much. Um, it was one of my favourite things. The gentleman that played Gulliver, um, we saw him again in the War Games, um, was amazing. His voice was fantastic, actually. Um, but, yeah, just the entire concept of that story, I thought, was was something pretty special, actually. Um, and I, I've never seen anything like that before. Um, I don't think I've ever seen anything like that ever, to be honest. Um, so that's the reason why it, it made it on onto my list um it was an it was a tough one actually because that would have been number one for me until i watched the war games now the war games was an absolute epic it was it just as, as brilliant as the daleks master plan in terms of um getting that much content and that might keep my attention for so many parts um but for me as as much as i love daleks master plan um, this kind of literally tipped it. This surpassed that for me. Um, I have to admit the performances from everybody in this was just magnificent. Um, the gentleman that played Carstairs was outstanding. Um, I loved Lady Jennifer. Um, I actually cared about everybody in that story, um, which hasn't happened for a really long time with me. Um, I liked the twists and turns. Um, it was nice kind of seeing the time lords for the first time as well um i believe it was the first time time lords had ever really kind of been mentioned before um correct me if i'm wrong um because the doctor always used to just say oh, like my home planet um but i think this might have been the first time that the time lords were mentioned um we still haven't heard gallifrey yet though um which is bizarre like they never mentioned that we were on gallifrey um, so that was quite interesting to me that obviously we went to his home we were just like oh we're going to my home planet this is where the time lords are but it was never named um if there's a reason for that please don't tell me because i don't know i i, I don't think i've reached this point yet um if it has been mentioned before um so kind of please don't say anything spoilery in the comments um if i've not kind of reached the point where it's explained yet thank you um and so yeah, this 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 story as a whole. Philip Maddock is an outstanding actor. So you could give that guy anything, and he would literally run with it, and he would make it phenomenal. He was great as the warlord in this. The gentleman that played the war chief irritated me so so much, but he did a really good job of it. A really good job. So again, this story was so well cast. You could not fault this story anywhere for me i i loved this story um i'd probably go as far as to say in the entire kind of six seasons that have been uploaded um this is this that was possibly my favorite story from the first six seasons was was that one it was such um a sad way for zoe and, and jamie to leave as well um for them to only kind of remember that one meeting with the doctor and then never remember anything past that i thought was one of the one of the worst things um i can probably imagine it was quite upsetting for a lot of people who were watching at the time when it originally aired as well it kind of reminded me a lot of when donna left actually and obviously the doctor had to kind of remove his himself from donna's memories um but obviously with donna he he did it more excessively than what the Time Lords did it to Jamie and Zoe. They at least got to keep their first meeting, that memory of him. But when when it happened to Donna, she she didn't keep anything. Um, obviously, it was to keep her safe um, and to, to, to keep her alive, basically. But um, I, f I found it was quite... It was quite hard to watch, actually, when, when Jamie and Zoe went. Because I, I, I... Jamie just kind of became a staple 
same as the doctor it was like you would i was never not going to expect to see jamie there i thought oh like you know you you think this is i'm watching doctor who i wonder what jamie's going to do next but it's quite bizarre going forward um without him really um i know i'm a few seasons ahead now but i still do think at times oh bloody hell like it's no jamie and and it's really weird it's really really weird um zoe as well zoe had really grown to like zoe she was a really good little character and wendy padbury was is just like a little china doll <laughs> and i really enjoyed her characterization of zoe i think she kind of brought zoe to life incredibly incredibly well um i warmed to her a lot more than i did victoria um and i warmed to her a lot more than i, I did ben and polly um uh, but my views on Ben and Polly are probably really well known. Um, I was never a fan of those guys. But I really, really liked Zoe. Um, she was practical. She was intelligent. Um, not to say that previous companions before her weren't. But Wendy Padbury's characterisation for me brought some brought a quality that those other guys never brought to their to their roles and their their characterisations of. of the guys they were playing um and she, she really kind of they became a unit which was really really nice no no pun intended um but they did become a unit um and it was a, and it was a fantastic little unit to have um and it was such a shame that we only really had zoe for that one season because i i feel like if we had her um like a little bit earlier it, it she just would have got better and better as, as time went on um so it was, as i say yeah it was it was a real shame that she wasn't around for longer really because her relationship with trout and her relationship with fraser hines was just brilliant and it was lovely to watch you could see that they really got on on screen um so it was it was it was it was a nice little kind of group um after hartnell babs and ian um they're like my go to TARDIS team if it were um my next one would be Trout and Zoe and Jamie for definite because they were just fantastic um as, as as much as Babs and Ian for me were kind of Hartnell's backbone Zoe and Jamie were Troutons um so it was it was it was a pleasure to watch those three together really um so yeah that uh, those are my top five Troutton episodes um I've absolutely adored watching that gentleman. I really adored watching him. Um, I'll miss him actually quite a lot. I'll miss him quite a lot. I am missing him quite a lot to be fair. But yeah, where I am now, I'm really enjoying. Um, so hopefully, like you guys, will be able to watch those soon. Um, there are a few already up on the Patreons. Um, so I know a lot of you guys have already kind of seen the first couple of stories at this point, probably, um, of Mr. Pertwee, the Pertwee. Um, so yeah, I'm really enjoying where this is, where this is moving to and where this is going forward. Um, I must admit when I watched the opening Pertwee episode, um, my eyes took a while to adjust to the colour. <laughs> Which sounds ridiculous. It sounds ridiculous. Um, but I was like, I was surprised at how much blue I could see on the earth. Spoiler. Um, but it's, uh, no, I'm really, really enjoying where, where things are going at the moment. So um, I'll kind of sign off. Thank you for watching. Um, Whatever your favourite episodes are, please pop them down in the comments below. I'd love to know what everyone's favourite Trouton episodes are, um, whether or not you agree with mine, or if you've got completely different ones. Um, you know, we're all different. We all like different things. Most of mine are the crazy ones, which probably won't surprise a lot of people, to be fair. Um, but yeah, it would be nice to know what everyone else kind of thinks and what everyone else likes. Thank you so much for watching. Um my inane ramblings once again um and hopefully you guys will be getting some john pertwee at some point um soon yeah so look out for that thanks very much guys see you later